Thursday, which was pretty much average, just over 1.6 billion shares. New York Stock Exchange volume today tracking very close to what we saw yesterday, which was light, very light, below average at 614 million shares. So not much volume in the market today. Sort of a lackluster uh, performance for the major averages. Let's check in and see what our friend the NASDAQ Composite is doing. It is lagging today, still you know, bumping up against resistance at this 50-day 50, 50 moving average. It's been uh, doing that for about five days or so. It hit a high today of 3,003. Its 50-day moving average is 3,006. So it stopped uh, three points short of the 50-day moving average. Turned away down near its session low, uh, down a little more than 12 points to 29.77. The S&P 500 doing a little better. Tech stocks look vulnerable here. There's no question about it. But when you see Apple trading the way it is and some other tech names out there, not surprising to see the NASDAQ uh, lagging the market here. The S&P 500 actually, you know, kind of almost close to taking out its 50-day moving average here to the upside. Uh, it fell below the 50-day uh, moving average uh, earlier this week on uh, Monday. You can see that on Tiger TV closed uh, near its low. Uh, but right now it is up a little more than two points to 14.16. Its 50-day moving, moving average is at 14.17. So uh, if you've been listening to my show for any amount of time, you know I use the 50-day, the 200-day 50 the, the on a daily chart, on a weekly chart. They're known as the 10-week and 40-week moving averages. But um, very important to watch how the indices are trading right now, especially the NASDAQ Composite and the S&P 500, how they're trading around the 50-day moving average uh, right now. The uh, Dow uh, doing pretty well today. Uh, as is the S&P 500 right now. The Dow is uh, working on three straight gains here. It's up 59 points, uh, up near its high for the day, last uh, trading at 13,133. Its 50-day moving average is at 13,146. So it's only about, uh, what, about 13 points to go before it um, moves above that 50-day moving average. So, uh, Interesting technical action in the in the Dow and the S&P 500. The Nasdaq Composite still looks vulnerable here as it continues to get turned away at the 50-day moving average. Okay, House Speaker John Boehner on Capitol Hill earlier today had a press conference. Nothing new in, uh, regarding the fiscal cliff talks. He said that uh, no progress to uh, report on the budget negotiations basically said President Obama is quote-unquote slow walking the economy toward the edge of the fiscal cliff. Come on, guys, get your act together. 877-927-6648. Uh, first call of the day, we're going to talk to uh, Mohammed here in Southern California, Glendale, California. How are you doing today, Mohammed? Good. Thank you, Ken, for taking my call. Appreciate the phone uh, call. I have a question, <clears throat> excuse me, in Boston, Sci Boston Scientific, BSX. I picked it up today at 5.49. I think it probably has room for a little bit more. What do you think? Okay, Boston Scientific. This is a uh, the medical device maker, basically, in the field of uh, uh, cardiology, oncology. Uh, market cap uh, 7.9 billion, very liquid average daily volume of about 14, just over 14 million shares. Um, you know, so Boston Scientific uh, right now, it looks like what a formidable resistance level to, to me anyway, looks like it's 200 day moving average at 568. That could be a tough nut to crack in the in the near term. If it does, uh, if it does get about above that, then maybe a run to 586 uh, could be in, in store. But uh, right now, I don't know, uh, Mohammed. there's not much uh, uh, this stock is uh, doing to tell me that uh, an uptrend or or uh, a renewed buying interest is going to uh, start anytime soon in this stock. So when you buy a stock, do you have, uh, do you use stops? Do you typically use stops? Yes, I do. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, uh, you know, I don't have a strong feeling either way about it. Technically, it just, uh, its chart doesn't, uh, uh, you know, it, it obviously made a nice uh, nice move uh, back in November, you know, November 20th, 21st, uh, 22nd, hit an intraday high of 586 on November 26th. It's been under some selling pressure uh, since then, but is back underneath its 200-day uh, moving average. And anytime a stock falls below a support level like that, sometimes it can turn into uh, resistance. So if you do get a little rally up to maybe 570 uh, thereabouts, you'd want to watch how it reacts there. If it gets turned away um, repeatedly, that's typically not uh, not a good sign. So that's uh, okay. generally my, my, my take on it. Okay, sounds good. Um, can you have time for one more, please? Sure, Mohammed. Uh, SRPT, uh, it went down today. Uh, fairly okay news they had today on uh, their drug, which is in phase two. Um, it's just sitting at the 200 day. Uh, right, this is uh, SRP's uh, Sarepta, Sarepta yeah. Therapeutics, right? Okay, so yeah, I mean this one again. It's uh, it's down for four days in a row. Uh, not seeing any buyers uh, come in to support the stock here at its 50-day moving average, which is a little bit uh, troubling. Uh, volume is uh, looks like it's going to be above average uh, today. So uh, to me, you'd like to see it. it back in uh, late October, you notice it firmed up at that 50-day line, and you know, now it's uh, finally making a little trip uh, below it. So this one looks a little vulnerable to me. I mean, if you're going to buy it here, you'd have to have a tight, uh, tight stop. But uh, I don't like the fact that it looks like it's not uh, not holding so far the the 50-day line here. Thank you so much, Ken. Okay, Mohammed, appreciate the phone call. Thanks. Bye bye. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Appreciate the phone call there, and uh, yeah, had some good calls yesterday. So uh, feel free to to give me a call any time. All right. So talking about House uh, House uh, uh, Speaker John Boehner, not much progress in the fiscal uh, cliffs uh, fiscal cliff uh, talks. Uh, the uh, end of the month is going to be here at uh, at uh, at no time and. Um, uh, my friend uh, Jim Kramer over at the street uh, thinks it's 50-50 that there's going to be a deal before the uh, before the end of the year. Take a look at some Nasdaq 100 names here. Uh, shares of Google uh, resistance at the 50-day moving average so far. It is uh, under some pressure today, down seven dollars and forty-one cents, uh, a little more than one percent decline for Google to six eighty-three seventy-two. Uh, this one's looking a little bit uh, vulnerable here. Uh, Priceline has uh, come back uh, to life uh, a little bit, but it too is under pressure with the NASDAQ composite today. After hitting an intraday high of 672.95, it is now down $5.40 to 658.74, still holding above its 200-day moving average, but uh, a day of outperformance for uh, Priceline. And uh, also we'll check in on uh, Apple here. Still looks like a, a broken stock to me, uh, trading right at its session low here, down $14.05 today. 2.6% uh, decline for Apple to 533.19. Um, Apple's uh, price decline, you know, uh, again, a stock that, pulls back from $700 $700 down to around 500 and you know 510 $520 a share there are concerns about growth prospects going forward i think the possibility of slower earnings growth uh, margin pressures uh, slowing year over year sales growth uh, all of that is in play with apple and i think that's why you're seeing the stock acting the way it is. Uh, the yields, uh, bond yields higher today. The 10 year note up to 1.63%. 30-year bond also higher to 2.82%. Dollar up uh, 14 ticks, two tenths of a percent gain to 8040 after a big gain yesterday. February gold up three dollars and seventy cents, two tenths of a percent gain settles at one thousand seven hundred five dollars and fifty cents an ounce for the week. Minimal loss for gold, it lost uh, four tenths of a percent. Uh, crude oil for the week lost 3.4 percent today january crude lost 33 cents four tenths of a percent settled at 85.93 a barrel uh, let's talk about this jobs report as we head into the first uh, break here non-farm payrolls for november up 146,000. 
the estimate uh, was for uh, 90,000, I believe. So it was nicely above expectations. Uh, the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics said there was no uh, Hurricane Sandy did not uh, factor into the data here. I know some eyebrows were raised over over uh, over there. But, you know, the market's reaction to this number is really, uh, on the one hand, it's surprising. On the other hand, it's not surprising. Uh, over the past... Uh, 12 months or so, employment has risen, has risen by an average of about 150, 157,000 jobs. Over the past 12 months, averaging about uh, 157,000 uh, job increases uh, per month. So, you know, here at 146, it's really been more of the same. The unemployment rate did drop down to 7.7 percent, but not because the jobs picture is getting better. It's um, the drop in unemployment was due to a decline in the labor force. That has been a pretty consistent story. Uh, when people looking for work all of a sudden stop looking for work because they're frustrated they can't find a job, that actually helps the unemployment rate drop. So now you know why there are people that uh, aren't happy with the way uh, this uh, jobs data are uh, collected. Um, Octo October job growth was revised lower to 138,000 from 171,000. We'll be right back, folks. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Happy Holidays from TFNN. Our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale is back this December at TFNN. Normally, we offer only a 10 to 20% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases, but through December 19th only, when you purchase Tiger Dollars to spend on any of our products, you get a 25% bonus on your purchase, and up to 10% of whatever you spend will be donated to the Salvation Army in your name. You'll receive a personalized thank you letter directly from our local Clearwater Salvation Army Administrator in appreciation of your donation. Tiger Dollars can be used on any of our newsletters or subscriptions, never expire, and are fully transferable. Take advantage of our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale of the year right now. Visit TFNN.com for all the details and to make your purchase today. Happy Holidays from TFNN. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing. Ken Shreve with you. Hope you're having a great Friday, and uh, hope you have a very good, relaxing, restful weekend as well. 877-927-6648. Going to go north of Los Angeles to Stockton, California. Talk to Sam, who wants to talk about Microsoft. How you doing today, Sam? Happy Friday. Fantastic. Once again, happy Friday, and thanks for taking my call. I'm uh, asking you to look at Microsoft because it's a contrarian play against the Apple, and also instead of Apple winning the China Mobile, uh, Nokia wins the China Mobile contract. And uh, I know the chart looks horrible, but uh, what do you think about that? Well, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of Apple at all here. Um, I think the stock has made its uh, big move. I think there are a lot of serious questions about execution going forward for Apple and its stock prices uh, basically saying as much. Uh, unfortunately, the same uh, looks to be true for Microsoft because, uh, you know, this is a stock that, you know, continues to be dumped, Sam, by, uh, by institutions. I just, I, I just can't. I can't embrace stocks that are being sold, you know, unequivocally by institutional investors. It's a contrarian play, absolutely. I mean, there are some some market pros out there that, that tell you to buy when everyone else is selling. That's never been my uh, that's never been my strategy. Uh, the issue with with Microsoft, I mean, it's got a lot of issues, but you know, they just released that Surface tablet they were a little late to the to the tablet game but the the surface is out there kind of limited distribution but apparently sales are are not going well at all uh for this uh for that uh, for microsoft's new offering so i just really can't you know i can't see much going go much good going on right now at, at microsoft and it's just it's just not a stock that i can um you know speak that positively about right now well i appreciate but, it thank you so much okay sam appreciate the phone call Bye bye. Uh, you know, the, and the one thing you've got, uh, Microsoft has going for it. I mean, if you like, if you like your dividend yields, uh, you know, you're going to get a three and a half percent yield uh, from Microsoft. But I'll tell you what, if this thing keeps uh, going lower, you know, it's uh, right now trading around twenty six uh, thirty eight. The the selling pressure has been so intense in Microsoft that to me, it looks like a, a trip down to that twenty, uh, you know, to the lows it made back in. Uh, August of uh, of last year, you know that twenty three seventy five twenty four. Uh, those uh, certainly seem to be uh, in play uh, right now. But I know I know there's a strategy out there that you know you're supposed to buy when no one else wants to to buy, and that that can work out. But um, you know, bottom line is I just like to to f focus on growth companies where there's a lot of good going on, uh, not. A lot of uh, bad going on, and you know, execution issues at Microsoft. Uh, uh, stock under, you know, pretty intense institutional selling. It's not my, not my cup of tea. I'll tell you, a stock that I like better than Apple and uh, Microsoft at this point is Research in Motion. And I know it sounds crazy, and that's still, it's still not a stock that I would own uh, for my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. It's a little bit extended up here, but uh, you got to give Research in Motion credit because uh, it's made a tremendous move up off its uh, up off its lows, and there's been a lot of volume uh, behind the the upward move as well. So its technical picture has improved dramatically, uh, 
Uh, yes, fundamentals are still very much in question, but they do have a, a product launch uh, coming up uh, you know, in, in January, the BlackBerry 10. Uh, there's a lot of optimism about that. Um, you know, I don't want to give the wrong impression that you know, research in motion still has a lot of issues, and fundamentally it's, it's still questionable as well. But at least in terms of technical action, it's not even a, a comparison. Much, much healthier, much, uh, much more bullish than Apple and Microsoft uh, recently. All right, uh, so we went over the jobs report. Uh, also wanted to, to, you know, the another piece of economic data that came out today was the preliminary reading uh, University of Michigan uh, Consumer Sentiment Index uh, today. Really a big drop, fell to 74.5 from 82.7, and that was well below the consensus estimate of 82.4. So sagging, excuse me, sagging consumer confidence uh, revealed by the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index uh, today. Uh, earnings, it was uh, interesting to see SWHC trade higher in after hours. When that jobs report came out earlier today, uh, the stock futures immediately turned around. It looked like it was going to be a decent day for the market. Uh, Smith & Wesson uh, made a, a nice upward move. It hit an intraday high of $11.25, but look at the stock now. A stock that had its bullish, uh, a stock chart that had its bullish traits headed into today, all of a sudden looks uh, very, very ugly. Smith & Wesson, heavy volume reversal off its high, uh, now down 88 cents, 8.1 percent to $9.97. They made 24 cents a share. That was in line. Sales up an impressive 48 percent to 136.6 uh, million. Uh, industry group peer Sturm Ruger also under a lot of pressure today. We'll be right back, folks. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. 
Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about tactical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. Folks, don't forget about the Tiger Dollar promotion. Uh, we do the promotion on and off at uh, TFNN.com, but particularly during the holidays, because if you purchase uh, Tiger Dollars, we'll donate up to 10% of your purchase price to the Salvation Army. You can use uh, Tiger Dollars to get great discounts on... Uh, newsletter subscriptions at tfnn.com, etc. If you sign up by December 19th, you'll get a 25% bonus match on any amount of Tiger Dollars you purchase over $500. So uh, it's a great way to save a lot of money on several different products at tfnn.com. Uh, I've been talking about my Ultimate Growth Stocks uh, model portfolio. It's uh, a newsletter that I write at TFNN. If uh, you want to check out 30 days free of Ultimate Growth Stocks, you can do that right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Uh, just click the Newsletters tab at the top of the page and then Investment Newsletters, and um, you can see how I approach uh, the market. I have currently have five long positions on in the model portfolio and two short positions. Um, added another short position uh, today and uh, that's the tricky thing about this market. Uh, you know we did get a, a buy signal from the market. It was a mild one uh, the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, on uh, it was a couple Fridays ago, uh, but this market is just not sure which direction it wants to go. There's still uncertainty. The uh, fiscal cliff negotiations uh, has a kind of a stranglehold on the market. Apple itself sort of has a stranglehold on the uh, Nasdaq uh, composite. Uh, so it's a difficult environment for stocks to make uh, headway. Again, there were some people thinking we get a better than expected jobs number today. Maybe that would be the catalyst for bringing some new money in from the sidelines. Uh, that has not turned out. Out, uh, to be the case because the volume today is uh, fairly anemic tracking below what we saw on Thursday NASDAQ volume still tracking about 5 to 10 percent lower than uh, Thursday NYSE volume tracking pretty close to what we saw on uh, on Thursday so kind of a lackluster performance. Uh, NASDAQ Composite uh, still trading near its session low. This is the most vulnerable index, without question about it. The, 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 the weakness in Apple uh, really impacting uh, tech uh, negatively overall. NASDAQ Composite right now down 13 points to 29.76. The S&P 500 and the uh, Dow, not so much the case. I mean, this, uh, these are starting to show signs of uh, life here. The S&P 500 working on its third straight game. It is up two and a half points right now to 14.16. Its 50-day moving average is at 14.17. So it is making a bid to get back above this um, level, which has been resistance for the past uh, couple of days. And the same holds true for the Dow Jones Industrial Average as uh, well. It is uh, trading near a session high now up 65 points to 13,139. Its 50-day moving average is at 13,146. So it's got seven points to go uh, to get back above that 50-day line. I think that would be, a, if it can close above that, that would be a significant technical uh, achievement. 
taking a look at some uh, interesting setups out there. This is another kind of tricky thing about this market is that when I go through my growth screens looking for buy opportunities, they're just not easy to find right now. People uh, are calling me up on the show asking me about this stock and that stock and this stock and that stock, and I just uh, don't have much positive uh, uh, to say uh, when it comes to most stocks in the market right now. I'm just not seeing uh, actionable uh, setups. Uh, that said, there are a few. I like the way Varian Medical Systems is uh, trading here. You can see um, a, a big gap up for the stock uh, for Varian Medical. That gap up was on uh, October 26th. I believe it was better than expected earnings, but it has been holding on to gains uh, nicely, trading tightly, moving sideways. It is outperforming today up a dollar, 1.4% gain to 70.61. Uh, this is an example of a stock that could try to stage a technical breakout over 71.39 soon. Really haven't seen much in the way of, of viable, heavy volume volume breakouts uh, for the as many that are working there are plenty of others that aren't working so it's really you know tough to have um I don't feel like I have much of an edge in this market yet. Uh, when big new big money starts coming in from the sidelines, that should improve the success of uh, technical breakouts. But anyway, Varian Medical is one to keep an eye on. Fundamentals are pretty decent. Uh, not not super fast growth but consistent growth and uh, very strong bullish technical setup here Varian has a market cap of 7.7 uh, billion and a uh, average daily volume of just over 1 million shares they make um, medical uh, devices that uh, specialize in the field of uh, cancer uh, chemical firms still making their presence felt here. Westlake Chemical making a nice move today. Didn't see any, uh, didn't see any news, but this is a mini uh, breakout of sorts. Volume is pretty decent, up 4.8 percent today to 76.01. And uh, also in the sector, CYT, SciTech Industries, another stock that is trading near the uh, near the top of a base here. If uh, this market can hold itself together, wouldn't be surprised to see. Uh, SciTech try to make a move over its recent high of seventy dollars and fifty cents uh, thereabouts. So the chemical sector um, dishing up some stocks uh, showing relative price strength. Uh, how about that move in Transdime Group today? TDG. This is a, a stock that had been uh, doing well under a lot of pressure here, down uh, four percent today to one twenty nine thirty seven. Heavy volume break below its fifty day moving average. Uh, the news here is that the company and United Technologies, UTX, agreed to terminate a previously announced sale of uh, the Goodrich Corporation pump and engine control systems business to Transdime after the U.S. Justice Department objected to the transaction. So not good news for Transdime. The stock is paying uh, a price as a result. Mentioned that strange day of trading in Lululemon yesterday. Investors couldn't decide if it was a, uh, you know, a good earnings report or a bad earnings report. A big wide intraday uh, spread in trading here. Lulu under a little bit of pressure today, not by much though. Down a dollar seven, one and a half percent to seventy-two uh, fifty. Again, after a wild day of trading yesterday. Let's take a look at uh, AltaSource Portfolio Solutions. Kind of a speculative name here, but it's really been a solid uh, performer in the market. Uh, you can see enthusiasm is uh, waning here. Altasource uh, recently broke below its 50-day moving average. It looked like it was going to pop above the 50-day line today, but... Um, you can see the stock is only up a buck 68 now after hitting an intraday high of 109.24. Uh, it's now trading around 102.87. So what was a very impressive day of trading for AltaSource, all of a sudden, not so much so, but the company is spinning off two of its business units, AltaSource Residential and AltaSource Asset uh, Management. The stock definitely has been under distribution um, uh, recently, so uh, still some sellers in the stock today. Uh, when a company spins off a business unit, this is actually the, the opposite effect of, so you have a company that makes an acquisition, acquires a company, there are earnings dilution concerns, stock normally trades lower. Well, when a stock spins off some business units, uh, that is actually the opposite. It, uh, it is non-dilutive. 
the fact that shares outstanding uh, for the parent company tend to decrease, and it can actually uh, be uh, beneficial to earnings. So usually news of a spinoff is uh, going to result in a, a higher share price for the company that's doing the spinning off. Uh, that was the case earlier for Altasource Portfolio Solutions, but uh, again, stocks trading near its session low after early uh, strength, uh, only up 1.7% now to 102.87. How about that uh, story from Netflix? Uh, came out after the close uh, last night. Much ado about nothing, in, in my opinion. The uh, stock pretty much shrugged off the news here, but um, basically the SEC let uh, Reed Hastings know that uh, they think he's violated public disclosure rules. Uh, regulation, fair disclosure. With a recent Facebook post, the post uh, said that Netflix viewing exceeded 1 billion hours in June, and the SEC is saying this is a material information, should have been disclosed. Um, Reed Hastings said that it had been disclosed uh, earlier at the company's website, but... Um, so just a bunch of finger pointing. I doubt it's going to amount to much. Uh, looking at the way Netflix is trading today, uh, it's up 36 cents to 86.53. So I think this is ultimately going to, you know, pretty much be a non uh, non event here. Uh, mentioned uh, shares of Apple still under pressure. Let's take another look at Apple uh, trading near its session low. Hit an intraday high of $555.20 a share. Now trading at five thirty two ninety five. Down a little more than 14 bucks, 2.6% on the day. Um, you know, I've been saying this for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, I know a lot of other people have been saying it for weeks and weeks and weeks. You know, it's not real complicated with Apple. It's a stock that has been under distribution since late September, and it remains under distribution. Simple as that. And, um, you know, Microsoft is under. There are a lot of stocks that have been under distribution recently. Microsoft is one of them. Um, you know, Apple uh, is certainly another. And, uh, you know, I like to teach investors it just doesn't make sense to look at stocks that are being liquidated by mutual funds and other big investors. It just doesn't make any sense. It, it really, you should focus your attention on those stocks that are being acquired, uh, accumulated by institutional investors. Uh, even, it doesn't mean they're all gonna go up, the ones that are being acquired, but your odds are better in making money when you're swimming with the market tide rather than trying to swim against the market tide by buying a stock under distribution. You know, the chances are that the stock is normally, the trend is gonna continue, and it's normally gonna, you know, continue lower. So, um, staying away for Apple, staying away from Apple uh, for now and uh, just not interested in, in owning it and a, another bearish day for the stock uh, today. All right, taking a look at some other base building stocks here. I know we mentioned New Star on the show yesterday. We'll look at the daily first and then the uh, weekly. Uh, New Star pretty much at the top of a base that started back uh, since early October. Down seven cents today to forty dollars and ninety one cents. Take a look at the the weekly for New Star. And uh, we see a pretty decent uh, technical setup here. What I'd like to see Newstar do is just uh, form a little handle area here. It's working on three straight weekly price gains. If it can uh, maybe fall 5%, 7 percent something like that it's at 4091 right now maybe it comes down to 38 37 in light volume forms a little hair uh, handle area that that could pave the way for a nice uh, breakout about um, uh, more than half of new stars revenue uh, comes from routing and managing phone calls and text messages for major U.S. telecom service providers um, this company with pretty decent fundamentals and a very strong technical picture Definitely uh, one to watch. Let's also take a look at shares of Abaxis. Daily chart first, it is uh, up a dollar nineteen today, three point two percent to thirty eight oh four. The uh, weekly chart here shows a uh, pretty decent technical setup, big long base. It uh, recently came down to its forty week moving average. Never really corrected that far off its high, so it. To, is showing relative price strength in that regard. I also like this uh, support week. If you're watching in Tiger TV, you see it closed um, 
It closed higher for the week. It closed up near its high and touched its 40-week moving average, and volume was pretty heavy. So that's what's called a support week at the bottom of the base. Uh, this is a, a stock where a technical breakout can't be ruled out. Uh, growth prospects are very bright at a Baxis. First of all, what the company does, they make portable blood analysis systems, another medical device maker. So a, a breakout over $40 uh, could take shape down the line. Uh, when you look at an, annual earnings growth, they're uh, already in fiscal 2013 right now, but uh, fiscal 2013 earnings are expected to be up 31% from 2012. And in fiscal 2014, uh, their next fiscal year, annual earnings expected to be up 43%. So there does uh, look to be a compelling uh, growth story here for uh, Abaxis. Uh, it's not a it's not a mega cap stock, uh, so caveat emptor to some degree. It uh, trades a little more than 105,000 shares a day, so it is uh, thinly uh, traded, and it does have a market cap below uh, one billion. So it's on the speculative side, but fundamentals are are pretty solid here, and uh, technical picture doesn't look uh, too bad either. Uh, take a look at Celgene, another stock that's showing relative price strength out here. Um, could be ready to add a handle area here. Again, here's that, that process of you got a, a big rally during the month of uh, November, and now it's starting to drift lower. So you could see you know, you've got a cup-shaped base here, kind of a U-shaped base, a little bit of a shakeout going on now. The stock is down 29 cents, not really giving up much ground to 78 uh, 79 and uh, so Celgene is uh, a breakout candidate as well. Uh, the company's flagship drug is Revlimid, which is uh, used to treat multiple myeloma. The company recently announced that late stage trials of its uh, breast cancer drug Abraxane uh, showed improved survival and pancreatic cancer patients. So that is uh, one reason behind the stock's uh, recent rally. And uh, look at a weekly chart for Celgene. And again, you'll see a nice, a nice base uh, taking shape here. Not ready yet, but if institutions start coming into the stock and, and buying, I won't be afraid at all to ride their uh, coattails. All right, headed into the final break, uh, folks. We'll check on the markets one last time when we come back, take a look at what's coming up uh, next week. We'll do that in about three to four minutes. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and 
provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Market hanging in there pretty well as we head into the close. Five minutes left to go in Friday's session. The Dow right now up 67 points, half a percent to 13,141. Uh, tech stocks lagging, NASDAQ down at 10 points off its... Um, off its lows, uh, still down three tenths of a percent on the day to 29.79, and the S&P 500 up three and a half points to 14.17. We are still in a confirmed uptrend. It is not an uptrend that is easy to feel very bullish about. Uh, typically, when you're in the early stages of a market rally, it, it's good to see the market presenting uh, numerous buying opportunities. Uh, at least the way I go about uh, buying stocks that have has really not been the case. Uh, there have been some isolated opportunities that I've been uh, taking advantage of, but uh, you know, technically, stocks that look like they have potential. Uh, technically, um, I've seen many cases where they've started to move and then they come all the way back to their buy points, and now they're just flailing around, not doing much of uh, anything. So. The market action overall continues to be a little wishy-washy, not surprising because uh, uncertainty is still out there in uh, spades. That uh, jobs number today was uh, pretty good. The headline number was, was very strong, much better than expected. But I think the market um, uh, you know, realizes that this uh, economy is uh, far from being out of the uh, woods. And while I like to believe that uh, GDP growth is probably going to come in better than expected next year, uh, a lot of that's going to be pretty predicated on how quickly this job market recovers and um uh, businesses out there certainly are in no uh, rush to hire at least uh, at this point. Hopefully that will change in the first quarter, second quarter of uh, next year, but still a lot of uncertainty out there, and uh, most importantly just a lot of money on the sidelines that is still not coming into the stock market. That's the, that's the bottom line, and that's why the market right now is um, just kind of flailing around and um, uh, not not doing a, a whole lot, but we are in an uptrend, and um, we'll you know hope it uh, hope it continues to work. But hopefully, we'll st start to see renewed signs of uh, accumulation 
uh, next week and beyond. Pretty quiet week of economic data. Next week we've got, uh, well, a two-day Fed meeting that ends on Wednesday, so we'll get an interest rate uh, decision. Most are expecting the Fed's going to continue with their bond buying uh, asset purchases, uh, which right now is about $80, $85 billion, uh, a month. Uh, so that will likely... Uh, continue. The Fed also recognizes that this uh, economy is still uh, not where it needs to be in terms of uh, growth. Inflation, not an issue for the Fed. Uh, we will get the uh, latest readings on the PPI and CPI next week. PPI, wholesale inflation on Thursday, the per, uh, consumer price index on Friday. In terms of uh, earnings next week, we're going to hear from Dollar General. You know, this is a company with a great track record of uh, a growth, great execution, but there's no question about it. This is a stock that has been under major institutional selling pressure for uh, several months now. Uh, they're expected to report another strong quarter on Tuesday. Earnings up 20% to 60 cents a share. Sales up 10% to $4 billion. Uh, but this is a, a tough deal here. You know, again, I just I can't embrace stocks that are being sold by big investors, and that uh, certainly is the case with a dollar general. We're also going to hear from Costco next week on uh, on Wednesday. Uh, Costco has been a, a tremendous performer. Big gap up for the stock on news of a nice juicy special dividend. Uh, Costco, you know, for a company with a market cap of 42, 43 billion uh, to continue to to deliver the bottom line and top line growth, uh, very impressive uh, operation here. Um, Restoration Hardware started trading in early November, ticker RH. We're also going to hear from them on Wednesday. Uh, that has been a tremendous uh, uh, performer, rebranded uh, company. Um, all right, folks, have a great weekend. Thanks very much for, for tuning in. I'll see you back here Monday, 3 o'clock Eastern. Take care. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Oh. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to mastering probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.